Not on the table, on the chair. Look. Come here. Not on the table. Oh, but look. Come here. No. <laughs> Good boy. Oh, now I got dog hair all over my gloves. Hey, welcome back to the end of the Persian Dagger series. Wrapped it up with the glue up in the last video, and now we have the finished blade here. Balancing, it balances right right there on the plunge line, but it's difficult to get it with one finger there. Um, so this, this dagger has been a really neat revitalizing experience in knife making. Um, I've, Jacob, don't text me while we're filming. You know, I've kind of gotten bored of doing Bowie knives and um, just the knives that we always make as knife makers. There's there's like a normal, it's like a Bowie knife with desert ironwood burl handle. And that's just, I, I just want to do something different and this was a nice refreshing knife. It's very unique and that's what I like about it. And it has just elegant curves. I love pretty much any knife that that is an Indo-Persian design or a Persian design. Um, aside from the functionality of the weapons or tools they also give them such an aesthetic beauty with their curves uh you know this is a chain mail piercing dagger and all they needed to have was just a straight blade but they just for whatever reason they decided to put this nice beautiful curve in so anything from that culture i really appreciate and i really take inspiration from and i want to do more knives from um, that culture and that time period a few hundred years ago. I wanna, wanna do pieces that are inspired by that. What caught my eye about this design that wanted me to do it in the first place is this spike. I just thought, I saw this knife and I saw it didn't have a cutting edge. I said, that is so strange and unique. And this spike is just powerful. It's so powerful looking. Um, just a thick cross section that just would go through anything, you know? Um, and when I think of Persian blades, I think of ornate, high-end, you know, almost all of their blades have inlays or exotic materials or engraving, um, things of that sort. So I see this as an opportunity to do Damascus steel and do, um, you know, fossilized ivory and do little pin details and stuff like that to, to go a little bit more over the top. So this knife is the first blade that I've gotten to put my Journeyman Smith stamp on. So I wanted to kind of kick off the journey, whole Journeyman Smith thing with a special knife instead of just an ordinary whatever. Um, so now I'm looking forward to working towards Master Smith. So I need to wait two years before I'm even eligible to test for Master Smith. I don't know if I'll be ready in two years or not. There's not a huge rush. I do want to get Master Smith once while I'm still young. Jacob. I do want to get Master Smith while I'm still young. The the thought of being a young Master Smith is appealing to me. So I do, I'm, if, if I can, I want to test for Master Smith in two years from now. And, and making knives like this, I think, is a good way to take positive steps towards that uh, goal. While I started forging this knife, 
I started thinking of inlays, um, but I wanted to put an inlay into the spine or into the steel of the knife instead of into the handle material. And first I was thinking maybe we, we can incorporate some mother of pearl or something, but I ended up going with this ivory handle. So I thought, okay, ivory needs to go into the spine to match the ivory scales. And originally I was gonna do some sort of slot or rectangle or some sort of different shape in there. And then Jacob uh, had the idea of just of doing some studded pins, which I thought was really good. So we went with that. And I'm really happy with that with how that turned out. Um, I think that it makes the knife look sort of prehistoric. <laughs> it reminds me of some sort of spine on a dinosaur for some reason. I think just the location of it and the the fact that it's ivory, you know, bone, um, it looks primal, it looks natural at the same time, and it just, the overall theme of the knife, to me, looks it looks mean and elegant at the same time. When I, If you look at a knife like this and you turn it around at different angles, to me, it reminds me of different animals or different things in nature. Um, different aspects, different parts of the knife look like different things found in nature. And I think that that should be the goal of knife design is to create an object that resembles things that are natural. Uh, because I think subconsciously anything that is natural is going to aesthetically look better than something that doesn't, something that's straight, something that's rigid. Going forward after this knife now, I think that my goal in knife making is to make higher end, my, well, I should clarify, my goal in hand forged knives, because I do make stock removal knives, which are, it's a whole different uh, mindset. Those are user knives, less expensive, they're per for performance and whatnot. But when I go for my hand forged knives for our video projects that we're starting to do here on YouTube now, I, I, my goal is to do knives that are more higher end, they're more elegant, they're more organic, um, you know, better finishes, better materials, stuff like that. So I want um, knife design, I want to work on having nice flowing clean lines that resemble organic features. So at this point, at the end of this series, what I want to know, what Jacob also wants to know is did you enjoy it did do you want to see more things like this in the future you know um m more pertaining to uh the actual way that we did the videos and the way that we documented the build not so much the type of knife um, because i'm going to keep making the types of knives that i like to make <laughs> you know um that's just how it is we're we want to document though the uh something that can be enjoyable for you to watch something to be educational for you to watch so um and if you do have suggestions on projects that you want to see made let me know in the comments below and we'll take a look at them and whatever is coolest we will start making so just let just let me know in the comments below um oh shh. just let me know in the comments below what you thought about this whole thing <clears throat> and if Poor dog. All right. If you did enjoy this whole video series, let me know in the comments below. And we really appreciate if you do share with your friends because this is the only way the channel can grow, only way we can keep doing this. Um, Oba, you got You really got to quit. Really got to quit, Oba. Please share with your friends, share the word, and so we can keep making videos and keep doing more of this. Um, Oh my god. So let us know in the comments below what you thought about this video series, if you like the knife, if you like the way the videos are put together, and, and we'll get a better idea of what you want to see in the future, and so we can we can keep making this channel grow, keep doing videos. You know, this is a way for me um, to get outside of my production work and actually make one-off knives, which is one of the things I'm more passionate about. You know, the production work, pumping out axes, pumping out production knives is something that I really enjoy too, but it's a whole different mindset, and I want to have both of those things so I never get tired of either of them. So um, hopefully we can keep this channel alive. If you enjoyed the video, let us know and uh, we'll see you in the next video.